everyone, this is Mike Check 95 and I've got a couple, probably good handful of videos to share with you guys, but they're not the typical movie reviews or the weird snack videos or any other content we've done in the past. I wanted to do this kind of video earlier this year, like at the beginning of the first week with all the movies we did last year, but it kind of fell back on the back burner on the schedule and here we are. So you're going to have a bunch of these videos coming up, so please bear with me on that one. I am known for this channel for doing movie reviews. For those who followed me with Mike Check 95 a couple of years ago, I had revamped the channel and made Mike Check Productions. That also in turn kind of uh, made me lose a couple videos over time when it came to the revamping of the channel. Of course, I now know how to save videos that I get rid of, but that was a year too late. But here I am with some top tens starting with the the good old days of the old reviews the re-uploads I should say I will have three top tens with this one the good the bad and the meh back in the day when I used to just review movies for the fun of it before I started taking the channel seriously here are, the, here are those movies that I kinda went but before I get into this uh, top ten of mini if you like this video like share subscribe join the madness Follow us on Discord, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, uh, the works. Jesus Christ. So for those who are probably wondering, what do you mean by the meh? So these are the kind of movies that I didn't necessarily really hate a lot or consider to be bad movies. But these are also movies where I was just kind of like, eh, either a flashbang in the pan or I was just like, I mean, it's a movie. Starting out with number 10, number this is going from number 10 to 1, number 10 being the least amount of meh for me, and number 1 going towards the meh, leading towards more bad, but it's still meh. Number 10, starting with the re-upload series of the meh, is Maniac Cop. Now, when I watched this for the very first time years ago for October Horror Fest, I actually really did enjoy Maniac Cop, because it reminded me a lot of like the other 80s slasher films that I tried to copy at the time, like Friday the 13th and all the, all those and whatnot. But kind of looking back to it, it's another typical basic 80s slasher that was okay for the time being, and it's got Bruce Campbell on it, so that's the plus side. Again, it wasn't bad, it's just, it felt a lot like a carbon copy of Friday the 13th, except imagine Jason in a police outfit. Number nine, this one may turn some heads for some people, for those who are diehard fans of this movie, a Haunting in Connecticut. I like the second half of this movie because the story of it is actually really interesting. It's the first half of the movie that kind of drags and almost bores me to my mind that makes me not want to watch this movie again. I know they're trying to build a story with the intro and kind of build up characters and like all the spooky stuff in the game before we get to the big like a twist at the end or the big like ending and everything and all the suspense that they have the good stuff I just kind of felt like um Haunting in Connecticut the way it starts it's like your typical 2000s jump scare till you're dead kind of horror because I if I remember right there's one part of the movie where I felt like I was about to get bombarded with like too many jump scares like within the first like 15 seconds of this part of the movie I was talking about it's not really in the beginning, it's kind of like in the middle part of the beginning, or the first half of the film. I just like, there were there were three jump scares that were like back to back to back for like the first ten seconds of this section of the movie that I was just getting so like tired of and everything. It just kind of wore me out for a second and I kind of started getting bored of the movie after that point. It was when we got to the midway point all the way to the end of the movie is where things started going, oh, okay, like now it's starting to be more interesting, now it's starting, starting to make sense, now it's becoming entertaining for an actual horror movie. It's just that first half for me, it's, it's kind of rough to get to, that's why it's sitting at number nine on The Man. Number eight, as much as I rated this movie decently high when I re reviewed it for Horror Fest, I'd have to give number 8 to the 2019 re uh, remake of Child's Play. I like the remake. I like what they tried to do. I like the, the new twists with the technology and like the Wi-Fi and the, the Bluetooth and all that fun stuff. Kind of like revamps the whole 
like creation of Chucky. It takes away the whole aspect of like the possession thing, more like a uh, self-aware AI kind of situation. And it's also voiced by uh, Mark Hamill, which is also very legendary. But comparing it to the original series up to a certain point, because there are a couple of Chucky films that are kind of garbage, it's missing that that sparkle in its eye. It's missing that kapow or that bang, like Emerald would say on his Food Network show. It's It doesn't have the same spark of energy as the original series did. Thinking about it, it's 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 got some work. Like, a sequel with building more story to it and giving it some more beef to the story with the sequel would probably help this first film a lot more. But as of right now, as a standalone, it's not going to be doing too hot, so number 8 will have to go to the remake of Child's Play 2019. Number 7 goes to The Strangers. Now, this film, you can either really love this film or you can really hate this film because that's how I feel like my friend group is when it comes to this movie. There's a lot of people that absolutely love this movie and a lot of people that absolutely hate this movie. I'm kind of in the middle. In that kind of situation, three people just randomly show up because they just happen to see some people home. That's absolutely terrifying. Like, if that were to happen to me and my family, I would be absolutely terrified. Like, with that kind of story, like, it's absolutely terrifying because that could happen to anyone. But, at the same time, I kind of feel like the events may drag a little too long for the film in some cases. It's far hell of a lot better than the sequel of this film. It's got its own merit. It holds its ground. It's a decent horror movie to kind of sit down and watch every once in a while. Not like a film you have to see every fucking two days. Just pop it in, eat some popcorn, stay with your loved one, your family. I guess if your family loves horror movies, watch it with your friends. It's, it's a fun flick. But not always a fun flick to watch all the time. Number six, and I am kind of going to get a little bit of hate for this for the fanboys of this series. Number six goes to The Purge. A lot of this doesn't have to do with the first film itself. The first film is really good. The idea and the concept of it is phenomenal. This film is actually really great. It's just what happens to the series that puts a stain on it for me is as to why I don't really want to go watch these kind of movies and also in particular this one. In reality, this movie on this list doesn't really have a right placing for it to be in the meh. It's just what happens building up after the events of this first film. To me, it's because the series gets too political after a certain point and also a lot of other like high topic um, issues that get brought up throughout the series and then it turns to a fucking yeehaw saw re reject with the new one which I didn't even bother watching because it, it looked fucking stupid. The way it develops over time for me is what hurts this film and it makes me not want to watch it as much but it's it's still good for what it is. Number five this is one where I kinda had to really think about because this list was kinda small I'd have to put the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2003 at number 5. When it comes to the 2003 and 2006 films of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies, those are the two by far best Texas Chainsaw films out of all the Texas Chainsaw films you can think of. Fight me on this hill, I will die on it. But it, to compare it with the other films that I had to go through on these three top ten lists, it kind of just sits right here because I like it. I don't see myself watching it a lot because I'm not a fan of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre series too much. I know this is one of the better ones. In fact, it's probably one. It's probably the best one. But it just it doesn't really make it doesn't really have the same effect on me as like Halloween or Friday the Thirteenth does for me when it comes to watching these movies. Hell, I can probably put Freddy on here and say that he has the same effect. But it just it doesn't have the same effect for me, so that's why it's number five. Number four has to go to The Conjuring 2. It's not as good as the first one. It's definitely better than the third one, and it's definitely better than some of the spin-off films that this series has created with its own fucking Conjureverse. I sat down and thought about this one too, because I had to really, really think about it, kind of like with the whole uh, 
uh, Chucky remake that I had back in number eight. But The Conjuring 2, good build up, great story, great scares, great cast. Run time's a little bit long. Because I feel like some events just kind of go a little bit longer than they should, or you think it's going to end right here, but then something else comes up and makes it even harder to get and defeat the main antagonist or the evil ghost. Watching this uh, more than once in a long period of time, for like a week, I feel like it would be kind of a drag and everything. It's another film I reviewed for Horror Fest. It's been a couple of years since I've seen it. I liked it when I watched it back in the day. It did really good when it came to like the mic check ratings. But for me, it's just, it's stretched out a little too long. It kind of feels like a three hour movie. Everything's great about it. It's just all the good things are stretched out a little too far. Number three, another controversial pick for the meh list because a lot of people would probably say this is on the good. I would have to say number three goes to Scott Pilgrim vs. the World. A lot of it may have to do with the fact that like they don't put a lot of the comic book source material into the movie for some strange reason. They cut out a lot of stuff. It's funny. It's entertaining. Uh, I'm not a big fan of Michael Cera. Like it's it's not it's, a, it's another not bad movie. I'd watch it again. Just I wouldn't watch it a lot, and it would get kind of hard to watch a lot. It's also another movie that has been shoved down my throat by at least three or four people in my life, which makes it more difficult for me to want to watch it. Number two would go to The Others. This film is great. It's a great drama. It's a great story. It's great suspense. It's fantastic and everything. It's not a film that I would want to watch all the time. It's also not really a horror movie because it was watched on Horror Fest. It's just, it's not my kind of movie. And that's mainly why it's not bad, it's not boring, it's not my kind of movie. And number one would have to go to The Lost Boys. Now this is meaning that The Lost Boys is teetering onto the, the bad list that I've made for the re-upload series. But it gets a nudge and it puts it as the most meh film that I had out of all these. It's definitely has Joel Schumacher written all over it. And in the past, I am known for not liking a good majority of Schumacher's like style and whatnot. It's too corny, it's too colorful, it's too goofy. It's not really scary or terrifying. It's some of the comedy is a bit over the top. It's the 90s. But I've only seen it once. I understand it's nostalgia. I understand it's a cult classic. But it's just not my kind of movie. So that puts The Lost Boys at number one. So that is my The Man list for the re-upload series. Tune back in next time to figure out what were my worst films of the re-upload series. If you enjoyed this video and the list that I made for this and you want to see some more, like, share, subscribe, join the madness. The Discord link is down below. We also have Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Follow us on there to keep track of all the links that are going on. Reach out to us for some ideas. Share your thoughts. If you think I'm wrong and you're right, I'm open for discussion on anything. This is Mike Check 95 signing out.